Hi everybody, good morning. Um, I'm Josh, this is Joe, Pat, and Justin. We're missing our uh, fifth member, uh, Sarah. But uh, today we are gonna tell you a little bit about our uh, staircase that we uh, designed. Uh, we, we did win uh, the, the best in our department, and we were really honored about that. We uh, had a really good group here. We're going to tell you a little bit about it. So first, we're going to talk to you about the tiny homes, because what we did is we uh, we solved a problem here that uh, that Joe identified at the beginning of our uh, fall semester. If you're unfamiliar, tiny homes is essentially just a miniaturized house. Usually features about 600 square feet. Average cost about $35,000 for these things. They're becoming really popular. You might have seen some of the shows uh, that have been airing around that are just dedicated to showcasing these, these things. Um, we really believe that, that the popularity of these are gonna be rising through the year. So we just um, saw a need and wanted to take a stab at it. So the problem here is that in order to save space, most of these tiny homes will feature a loft, second story of some kind, usually uh, meant for sleeping, uh, storage, that sort of thing. So obviously you need access to, to that second story. So the homeowners left, left with a choice. You can either have a staircase that is secure and safe, but obviously it's gonna take up some valuable floor space. Or you can do a ladder, which is just kind of inherently unsafe. So we wanna show you what we developed here. So this is our folding staircase. It not only folds in, but it also collapses together so that you can store it off to the side and takes up uh, about the floor space of a sheet of paper. And uh, we did build a prototype, and we've got a lot of areas uh, that we can improve it, but we're gonna tell you a little bit about how, uh, how we did this moving forward here. Let's turn to Pat. All right, so you, as you can see here, this is kind of how we designed the stairs. So one of the main purposes of this was to be able to use it at any height loft. So it's kind of a one purpose build for any home. And how we did that is, all the stairs are hooked together at the very top, which is hooked to a linear slider. So the slider is able to move up and down, and as it moves up and down, the top step is kept completely level with that linear slider, meaning that all these other stairs are hooked to it, creating kind of a parallelogram effect that runs down the whole staircase, meaning that no matter where you uh, put the height of the staircase, the stairs will always be level. And this is kind of just a 3D design of how the stairs look. We had to custom make some of these parts here at the end, and we'll touch on that here in a little bit. And one of the main goals we wanted to get across was kind of comparing it to a uh, industrial staircase that you can see right there. And those can price range from anywhere from $700 to $1,500, which is right where our uh, staircase originally or initially fell into. And another uh, design constraint we went with that was the uh, we wanted to keep it at a, a weight of six, or uh, a usability of uh, up to 200 pounds. Uh, well, actually, 300 pounds, yeah. <laughs> but these staircases weigh upwards of 200 pounds, which is right around where ours weighed at. So, uh, last semester we did a lot of analysis on this. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys know about uh, software types use finite element simulation. Uh, this allowed us to uh, prototype uh, on computers and uh, figure out what parts we could actually use uh, before we bought them. So that was uh, very helpful. Um, uh, and this staircase, what we did is we uh, simulated it with uh, 600 pounds of a uh, person standing on it. And we also simulated all the rest of the components in, in throughout uh, the staircase. And uh, it was found to be able to hold uh, two people standing on it one time. So uh, after we did this analysis, we wanted to go out and prove that our uh, data was correct. So uh, we got a press, and with it, we went up to 600 pounds, which was our goal. And it's thrown back elastically, so it was safe. And then we took it to 1,000 pounds to see where it failed, and that's where it did. And with that, the good news was it didn't drastically fail where you would break it and fall off. It just, as you can see, kind of snapped like that. And where it failed was with our middle hinges, which was what we proved in our analysis. And as you can see on the picture on the right, the uh, middle of the hinge kind of unraveled. So that's where our failure came. And with this, our uh, total cost was around 1400 And as you can see, 
our hardware cost a thousand, the lumber was sixty, and metal work that we had people uh, weld was two hundred. So obviously, there's places we can improve if we uh, we knew more people that could do it for cheaper. And with our sliders, if we had it uh, manufactured in a bulk, it would obviously the price would go down. So, uh, in conclusion, basically, when when we finished it, we figured out the thing weighed about 162 pounds. A lot of that was in the in the bolts and the wood. I think the final version we would go with uh, aluminum, do some welding. We could really get that weight down pretty dramatically, considering that 100 of uh, those pounds was in wood. Um, as you can see, 32 is in that, that hardware that we could uh, we could lighten up uh, quite a bit. Um, a couple other areas uh, that we could uh, improve. The, the thing was, it, mostly because it weighed so much, it was difficult to to uh, you know push in. We obviously wanted it to be very user friendly. We think we lighten the load on that. Perhaps even create a better mechanism. We could get that really um, simple. We talked about perhaps a motorized uh, mechanism that would just close and open that thing real smoothly for for the user. Um, we also wanted to have uh, some pinching guards put in there with all the moving parts. There is a little bit of a hazard with the with the fingers, and we do want to potentially add a handrail to that too. We do have an idea. We just weren't able to uh, implement that uh, in this this iteration. So that's it for our presentation today. Uh, you can see the final uh, final product there is a little big to bring in the building today. Of course, with the rain and everything, made it a little tricky. But uh, we'd love to answer any questions you guys have. Uh, about our staircase, um, we're all ears. Thank you for listening, by the way. Anybody have questions? Hold on. Would you um, sell the design to the tiny home makers? Manufacturers just lease them or license them the uh, design work. Yeah, I think that's that's probably the area that we're looking at at the moment. Um, I don't think any of us are, you know, super interested in, in going in production um, by ourselves on this. So I think if uh, yeah, if that opportunity presented itself, we would definitely be open to uh, to that proposal for sure. I'll follow up with that. Have you actually contacted any people that are manufacturing these homes? Uh, one of our, well actually our, the dean of the uh, mechanical engineering department, he was at a conference not too long ago and uh, he was talking to a um, lady there who actually, did, she's an architect for small homes and lofts here in St. Louis, so he's trying to put us in contact with her currently, but we haven't had any contact right now. Follow up with another one. My wife's an architect. What are the code implications of this thing? Uh, that's kind of a tricky spot because this is it's it's kind of both a ladder and a staircase and tiny homes are notorious for not complying with uh, city codes and the IBC the International Building Code. Um, so uh, right now we're looking at getting this to work with uh, RV code standards. Uh, that seems to be what the majority of um, tiny homes abide by. Uh, in this case, uh, it can abide by the RV code standards. It uh, has a proper uh, rise and run for uh, RVs. Um, uh, to be fully compliable, we would need to add the, the handrail. Um, but uh, in, in the future, as uh, the codes for cities change, uh, we can see them adopting the RV code standards uh, for uh, housing cities. Questions? Anybody? Tom, I know you have a question. Uh, okay. Uh, well, uh, how, how do you plan on marketing the product? Well, the product is supposed to be, um, uh, it's much like a dishwasher or something like that. It's, it's a product that, uh, if someone builds a tiny house, um, they can either have a decision, a lot of times they're custom made to do it themselves. This would be a product you market to the, the tiny house uh, community, and you would say, this can fit any tiny house, it can fit any floor, uh, floor space plan, and uh, it can uh, open up uh, the square footage of your living space. And that's, that's one avenue we can take. Another avenue would be uh, 
uh, reaching out to tiny home manufacturers, uh, the tumbleweed uh, manufacturers, something like that, try to see if they would be able to work this into some of their designs or something, something along those lines. All right, thank you very much, guys. Thank you. All right, we have another presentation.